Hi there, for this video, we'll be discussing the nature of roots in quadratic equations. So let's write that one down. So basically, this topic is useful in determining the whether our roots in a quadratic equation is imaginary, real, or distinct, and so on, without even needing to solve for them. So if we have a quadratic equation out here, a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we're in a, B, and C are the coefficients. Then we have what we call the discriminant, which is represented by D equals B squared minus 4AC. So this discriminant out here is the one discriminate there. This is the one that we will use to determine the nature of our roots. So upon getting the value of d, we have several cases. If d is less than 0, then our roots are 2 imaginary roots so basically imaginary roots are roots that contain the imaginary number which is i or the square root of negative one next case if we have d is equal to zero then we have two real and equal roots. Lastly, if we have d is greater than zero, then we have two real and distinct roots. So take note of their difference. For d equals 0, we have two real and equal roots. And for d greater than 0, we have two real and distinct roots. And actually, there is a subcase for d greater than 0. Two subcases. If we have d greater than 0 and d is a perfect square, then our roots are rational or they can be expressed as a over b wherein a and b are integers with b not equal to zero since if b is equal to zero then the whole rational number becomes undefined and if it's not a perfect square then our roots are irrational or they cannot be expressed in the form a over b. So take note of these and if you have your notes, copy this already since this will really be essential in our examples later. So let's move this one out here. And let's try to resize this. As a guide. Okay, let's start with our first example. Let's have 
x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So again, the first step is to determine the coefficients. So we have here 1 for A, 4 for B, and another 4 for B, for C rather. And now let's determine the discriminant. So we've got D is equal to B squared, which is 4 squared, minus 4 times A is 1, C is 4. This is equal to 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. And so we can conclude that it is this one. We'll have 2 real and equal roots. Indeed, you can verify that if we apply the perfect square trinomial here, this polynomial on the left is equal to x plus 2 squared equals 0. Then we can write this one as x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. So we'll have x equals negative 2 or x equals negative 2. Now you might see that this is just one root since they are the same. And that is true but since we're dealing with quadratic equation, what we do instead is we write x equals negative 2 multiplicity So basically, we use the multi multiplicity out here to signify that x equals negative 2 appeared twice. Let's have this next example. Let's have 4y squared minus 9 equals 0. In here, we are missing the middle term, the term with the variable y. So we can move this one out here and add that one out. And now we can determine the coefficients or the a, b, and c. So 4 will be a, 0 out here will be b, and negative 9 out here will be c. So we have b is equal to b squared, so we've got 0 squared, minus 4, times a is 4, times c is negative 9. This will become 0, will simply cancel out here, or since it's just 0, so we can disregard it. Then we've got mm, negative 4, times 4, times negative 9. When simplified, that is... 144. So we know that it's greater than 0. And furthermore, 144 is equal to 12 squared. So it's, all, it's greater than 0 and it's a perfect square. And so we can conclude that since d is greater than 0 and perfect square, so it will be this case out here. So we will have 2 real distinct and rational roots. Indeed, you can verify that the roots in this equation is equal to 
positive, negative, 3 over 2. So it's real, distinct, since we have positive, negative, and it's rational, since we can express it, express it in terms of fraction. Let's go on with our third example. Let's have z squared minus 10z minus 16 equals 0. Determining the values of a, b, and c, we've got here 1, we've got negative 10 as b, and negative 16 as c. So our discriminant is given by negative 10 squared minus 4 times a is 1, c is negative 16. This simplifies into negative 10 squared is 100, negative 4 times 1 times negative 16 is 64. So we've got 164. So we've got d equals 164 which is greater than 0. And note that 164 is not a perfect square. So it's not a perfect square. And so we know that it will be this case d greater than 0 and not a perfect square. So we can conclude that we'll have two real distinct and irrational roots. And again, you can verify that the roots of this um, equation will be z equals 5 plus minus square root of 41. So indeed, it is real since we don't have any imaginary numbers out here. It is distinct since we have plus minus out here. And it is irrational since we contain or we have a radical out here. If you are asking how to verify this, you can apply the factoring method or probably not factoring method out here, but you can apply the completing the square method or the quadratic formula method which you can check in the previous videos. Let's have this one last example. Let's have w squared minus 5y plus 7 equals 0. So determining the coefficients or the values of a, b, and c, we've got here 1, negative 5 to be b, and 7 to be c. So our discriminant will be b squared is negative 5 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is 7. This simplifies into negative 5 squared is 25, then negative 4 times 1 times 7 is negative 28. This will be negative 3. So we have less than 0. So we can conclude that since t is less than 0, it will be this case. So we will have two imaginary roots. We can verify that the roots in this one are w equals 5 plus minus square root of 3 i over 2. So indeed, there is an imaginary number here. So the whole root becomes an imaginary root. 
And so that is how nature of roots work. As an exercise, you can work on this two examples. First is 2z squared minus 8z plus 5 equals 0. And next, we've got 3y squared minus 7y plus 9 equals 0. So your goal is to determine the nature of the roots of these examples without even needing to solve for them. But you can solve for them after you determine its nature to verify if you got it correct. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot from this one. You can comment down below your answers and solutions to these exercises. So that's it and that is all for this video.